Hello and welcome back my friends. Well, it's that time of year again. The weather's heating up, the sun is shining bright, but my lawn is beginning to look quite parched. It's all dry, it's getting brown. It's not that sightly to look at. So rather than put gallons and gallons of water on it throughout the summer months to try and keep it looking good, I'm gonna do what I've done for the past several years, and that is to actually paint my lawn using a green, non-toxic grass paint. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, Dan, you have truly lost it. I can't believe, are you really gonna paint your lawn? Are you serious right now? Well, I understand completely where you're coming from. I thought the same thing when I first heard about this technique, but then I gave it a try and I started realizing all these different benefits that I'm gonna share with you today. And along with that, I'm gonna share with you several different tips. So if you decide to give something like this a try, you have the greatest success and the most realistic looking end result with the least amount of effort. So stay tuned. All right, so before we jump into the tips, I wanna talk about some of the different side benefits that I've gained from painting my lawn throughout the summer months. Well, first and foremost, I save an enormous amount of money. Although this green grass paint can cost a pretty penny, it's actually only about a third of the cost as compared to if I was to water and fertilize my lawn throughout all these summer months, trying to keep it looking healthy and green. That's a tremendous cost savings. And I'll follow that up by saying water conservation is a good thing where I live. We have drought for several months of the year and to be able to save all these hundreds of gallons of water and instead utilize some of that water to grow food crops, all the better. And here's another side benefit. Although you can continue to water or fertilize once this paint dries, it's gonna stay on there. Uh, I don't understand why you do that because then the grass just begins to grow out and then you've got the same issue starting all over again. Instead, what I do is once I start applying this paint, I completely stop watering or fertilizing. I really don't fertilize that much anyway. And as a result, the grass just completely stops growing. So I save a lot of time on maintenance. And although I don't have a really large lawn, still, to be able to save that time that it would take to be cutting the grass every week or two, trimming the edges, now I can spend that time again out into my food producing garden where I'd rather be anyway. And before I continue, I'll just address a comment I know some of you are thinking right now because I've read some of your comments on my previous videos where I've shown you the same exact technique and you're wondering why even grow a lawn in the first place. Well. I happen to like the way a lawn looks, especially in the front yard. It gives good curb appeal. It's a nice, clean look. Having a nice, clear view from the street all the way up to your home is actually good for safety. And besides, I like having a little patch of grass, and so do my dogs. We like to get out here with our bare feet and get grounded on the earth. And for at least half the year, the grass is naturally green because of the rains. And overall, it's just a nice place to be and work out in the yard. So with that being said, I wanna share with you a few tips starting right at the beginning of this whole process. And that is before I actually begin painting my lawn, what I do is I completely stop watering for about three to four days and allow everything to completely dry out. Prior to that, I was really backing up on the water, allowing the lawn to get that dry brown look. There's really no point in me painting green blades of grass. So I kinda of wanna get it to that stage where it's already dry and browning before I put the paint on. Besides, it's really gonna stick on there better, and because I backed up off the water, it's not just gonna grow back out. Think of somebody who dyes their hair, and then the hair starts to grow out. And you can see the natural color coming out, they call it the roots. Well, the same thing would happen with a lawn. So if you back up from watering a good few days, a week or two, prior to applying the paint, all the better. And the second tip is, before I apply the green grass paint, I like to go around and do a nice fresh edging around the border of the lawn and also give it a nice buzz cut on the lowest setting of the mower, nice and low. And I'm bagging up all the grass clippings as I'm doing this, as I don't wanna be wasting any paint on any loose material on the lawn. And this is also picking up the leaves and any other debris that might be on the lawn at the same time. So it's kinda of like I'm cutting it, vacuuming it, and just manicuring it prior to applying the paint. All right, so before I continue with the tips, I just wanna talk about the type of paint that I'm using. This is a product called Lawn Lift. I have no affiliation with the company. It's just a product that I've been using for years and I've had great results. I have tried some of the competitors and this particular product has held up really nicely. 
With that being said, this is a concentrate, so you're going to dilute it. And according to the container, you're going to do one part paint to six to ten parts water. Well, I stick to more like one part paint, five parts water. Over time, that's been the best mixture for me. And by having it at a higher concentrate, I can do a thinner layer of the paint. Now you're going to need a pump sprayer to apply this, and I suggest having a dedicated sprayer just for this process, as this green grass paint is going to create a bit of staining. And although you're going to rinse this out and clear it out afterwards, and it's fine to use for other products, I prefer to have a dedicated pump sprayer just for this task. And so I've had the same pump sprayer for several years now. The third tip is I recommend removing the little filter. You're usually going to find this on the downspout, the plastic tubing that goes down to the bottom of the container where it's sucking up all the fluid. And this just helps to keep different debris and whatnot from clogging up the nozzle. Because this paint water is thicker, I like to take that off. It just gives me a nice freer flow. And now when I add in my water, rather than just using water from the tap, I like to go to my utility sink in the garage and get some warm water. It just helps that paint to blend together nicely rather than putting it straight in cold water. I get a better result that way. All right, so now we're ready to start painting. And before you even get going with pouring the paint into the pump sprayer, I recommend putting on some gloves. I'm not wearing gloves today. This is non-toxic paint and it actually comes off your skin pretty easily. So I'm not too worried about it. But just be forewarned, you're more than likely gonna get a little bit of this paint on your hands. The main thing is don't get any overspray on any edging of your sidewalks or bricks. You wanna avoid that and definitely avoid getting it on your clothing. So I do recommend wearing like a dark colored overall, some black jeans or something that if you do get a little overspray, it's not gonna show up. All right, so one of the most important aspects of this whole application is to make sure you have the right spray pattern coming off the nozzle. Now with this particular spray pump, it's a cheapo. You just twist the end of the tip here, either right or left, and you get either a more streamlined or a more spread pattern. So I just play with that until I get a nice spread, but not too thin. I don't want this product just flying away with the wind. And by the way, don't do this on a windy day. You're just gonna end up wasting product and making a mess. So try to do this on a day when there's very little wind. All right, so now that I got my spray dialed in, the first thing I like to do is work around the edges. So get that edging done first. When I do the edging, I get really close with the wand. It just helps to prevent, again, the overspray. So it's a little bit thicker around the edging. And once I got an edge done in the area where I'm gonna work, I just start spraying back and forth. Now there's several different ways you can do this. Sometimes I just kind of shake the wand around and dust the lawn. And sometimes I do a more controlled sweep back and forth. So it's just really your preference, what you feel like doing. But I'd recommend sticking to more of a light coat than a thicker coat up front for a few different reasons. For one, you can always go back around and put down a second coat in any areas that need a little bit more product. But if you do it too thick in an area, then you're gonna have these blotchy patches of dark and light. So just try to keep it consistent and do more of a light spray throughout the entire lawn. And then if you need to, go back over it again and touch up some areas. So here's another tip for you. Every so often, you're gonna notice that the spray coming out is not coming out as good as it was in the very beginning. So what I do is I just turn that tip to a streamlined pattern and I give it a little blast and then I, then I turn it back counterclockwise to a spray pattern again and that'll clear up any clog. Maybe there's a piece of debris in there or just some of the paint got thick in a certain area of the tip. That'll clear it out and you're good to go again. I may do this five or six times throughout the process just on this little patch. So keep that in mind as well. My next tip is to aim to do this at a time when most of your neighbors either aren't home or they're sleeping because then you'll see their natural reaction at the end product. And I'm telling you, Nobody knows unless I tell them that I painted my lawn. It really is that natural looking and it really just makes the whole house look 10 times better once I do this. So most of the neighbors still don't know. Anyhow, you'll surely have some of your neighbors scratching their heads when they see your lawn looking so great after looking parched the day before. They're wondering what the heck just happened. So it's pretty funny. So that's about it. You just want to make sure that you're doing a nice consistent flow, a nice spray pattern throughout the entire process so that you don't have any blotching. And if you follow all those tips, when you're done, your lawn is going to look green and it's going to look completely natural. If you go for too dark and too perfect, it's going to look too dark and green, almost like those artificial lawns. So if you go a little bit thin up front and you can still see some of the dryness coming out, it just looks very natural that way. It also helps you to conserve product. 
And in the end here, I still have almost three quarters of that gallon of green paint left. So usually what I like to do is come back in about another week or two and do another dusting. Any grass that has grown, I may cut that back. And after doing that, I can go months without doing anything and the lawn looks great. And besides being an application where you can literally paint your whole lawn and back up off the watering throughout the summer months, maybe you've got a situation where you've just got certain areas of the lawn that get a lot more sun that need a little extra help. Or perhaps you've got neighborhood dogs that come by and do their business on your lawn and you've got a bleach spot that you want to cover up. Things like that. There's a lot of different applications. You can get this green grass paint not just in the gallon size but in the quart size. But if you're serious about doing this, I recommend getting the bigger bottle. You save a few bucks and it lasts a long time. You can have it for a couple years, no problem. And if you're interested in learning more about this product or picking up your own bottle to get going, check the link below. I'll also add some links to other videos I've done on this same topic. And one more thing I wanna add is once you're done here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to wash out your pump sprayer right away with some warm water. Otherwise, that paint is going to clog up all the different components of your pump sprayer. You're going to have an issue in the future. So don't delay on that. Don't wait an hour later. Once you're done, rinse it out. Use some warm water. Spray it through the wand. Get it all clear. Put it away. You're good to go next time. And so with that, I want to wish you all a great rest of your day. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care. I'll be talking to you again soon.